Hi viewers, um, I welcome uh, Dr. Varun Surya Devara to our YouTube channel. So, Dr. Varun is a prominent endocrinologist at Bangalore. Uh, so, uh, first uh, we'll learn a few things about Dr. Varun. Uh, Dr. Varun, will you tell us uh, something about, uh, you know, where you've done your studies from, uh, you know, where do you belong to and uh, what are you doing in Bangalore uh, in the field of endocrinology? So I hail from Andhra Pradesh. I did from I did my MBBS from Rangarai Medical College, Kakinada. My MD Internal Medicine from PGM or Chandigarh, and my DM Endocrinology from uh, Jipmar Pondicherry. So currently I am working as Associate Consultant in uh, Department of Endocrinology, Apollo Hospitals, Bangalore. And uh, we we are all we also have the pleasure of uh, having uh, Dr. Varun work with us at uh, Magna. So we are both from uh, the same place, Jipmar. Jipmar, I did my MD internal medicine. So it's a great pleasure to have uh, Dr. Varun work with us. So today we'll uh, discuss uh, a very interesting uh, topic. Um, so uh, endocrine system can sometimes affect uh, muscle function. So sometimes if you're having difficulty walking or, you know, getting up from a sitting position. So this all could be due to endocrine problems. So uh, I'll, I'll ask um, Dr. Varun a few questions so that, you know, you can understand a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, endocrinology and muscle function and, uh, you know, uh, muscle power, muscle weakness, etc. Uh, so, Dr. Varun, uh, one thing I want to know from you, uh, you know, uh, how common are these, uh, this endocrine problem of, uh, you know, endocrine related muscle dysfunction? How common is it? And uh, do you see it often in your clinical practice? And uh, how do you go about suspecting it? Uh, all these things. So, you can just tell us, tell the audience uh, some things about these, uh, these aspects. So, there are various endocrine causes of uh, myopathies. The muscle dysfunction or like uh, hypofunction of muscle can happen either primarily because of uh, uh, muscle problem, primary myopathy or because of uh, an endocrine disease causing like uh, nerve dysfunction. So, even the more uh, commonly like uh, diabetes can cause like uh, some of the like diabetic neuropathies can present as uh, myopathies or the excess and like uh, deficiency of thyroid hormone or an excess of uh, cortisol hormone or growth hormone can also present as uh, myopathies. Thank you. So uh, one more uh, thing I wanted to ask you. So you were mentioning about uh, steroid uh, induced myopathy. So I want to point out one or two things and ask you some questions about it actually. So uh, uh, in my clinical practice, uh, what I find is that the most common uh, endocrine myopathy is actually a steroid uh, induced myopathy because so many patients uh, take exogenous glucocorticoids uh, for various autoimmune conditions. They take uh, for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. There are so many conditions for which uh, patients take uh, steroid therapy. And uh, how do you know that whether your muscle have been affected? If you are on steroid therapy, how do you know that your muscle have been affected to the patients? No, And, um, you know, what can one do about it to, you know, reduce the impact on your day-to-day -day life? So, how the patients usually complain is uh, the the steroid myopathy usually affects the proximal muscles more. So patients usually complain of like a difficulty in getting up or lifting their like uh, hands while comb difficulty like while combing their hair. These will be the usual symptoms. So although the steroids are like essential medicines in treating these uh, rheumatological conditions, they do come with like certain adverse effects and uh, the myopathy is one of those adverse effects. So we have to limit the duration of uh, the steroids to the minimal extent possible and the minimal doses as possible. At the same time, like uh, the optimization of calcium, vitamin D, the other f factors and the associated like uh, hormone def hormone like uh, status is very important uh, to prevent the like myopathy. One more uh, question. I think uh, all our audience, um, you know, uh, have learned a lot about vitamin D deficiency. 
so have you seen in your uh, practice uh, any uh, you know severe muscle dysfunction secondary to vitamin d deficiency so can you describe any patient that you have seen in your uh, you know you were trained in gypmer you must have seen definitely some patients so can you just uh, share any anecdote or story about these things so although it can happen it's not very common uh, so in pediatric case group like it can happen with uh, severe vitamin d deficiency patient, patients can present with uh, bone deformities or with uh, myopathy however in adults it's not so common like uh, except for like one or two patients like it's not so common yeah no, i'll share an anecdote so you know uh, recently i came across a patient who is uh, like in this pediatric age group only the only complaint uh, actually for the patient was that she could not uh, walk properly she should not uh, she could not uh, get up from the uh, squatting position easily she also had um, deformity she had rickets she's a pubertal girl she was in 10th standard 10th to 11th standard so and uh, this period is a period of rapid growth where the demand for vitamin d is also very high so and again in this period you do get uh, uh, vitamin d deficiency so what happened was uh, you know the patient only complaint was that could not stand could not walk okay so there are some rare conditions called hypophosphatemic osteomalacia hypophosphatemic rickets like that so i thought the patient might have any one of these things but finally the patient turned out to have only severe vitamin d deficiency so uh, patients typically have something called a waddling gait like a, you know like a duck walks no so uh, because the weakness they are not able to walk also properly so it can be quite severe though vitamin d deficiency is extremely common in certain age groups where the demand is more and the supply is less supply is less for all of us all of us are vitamin d deficient there is epidemic of vitamin d deficiency the vulnerable population will be pubertal children and children who are in the first two years of life they are the ones who grow the maximum actually in those two years they are the ones who get rickets Uh, both in the pubertal age group and in the in the newborn first one or two years they get uh, this condition so this is something that you need to watch out for this is these are some of the uh, you know ways in which uh, our muscles are affected and uh, muscle weakness can be there uh, due to endocrine causes so we'll hope to bring you more and more uh, interactive sessions and uh, you know uh, some videos uh, by uh, uh, dr varun also dr varun also will launch his youtube channel in a short while so you should all subscribe to it and watch his content as well thanks